Okay, everybody, I thought I would go over my workflow to create um, concept textures that I'm going to use in Blender. Now, one of the projects that I'm working on, I wanted to have a texture that looked a little bit like River Rock. It's not going to be that obvious in the scene. When I went over to Polyhaven, where I usually go to find textures and stuff, there was nothing that was for River Rock, which is kind of normal. It would be sort of an odd one that I don't know if it, anybody would bother to create. And inside a rock, there's just a bunch of smaller rocks and, and whatnot. So without having something, it's up to us as 3D artists to go ahead and either create something or have somebody make something for us. And I find right now the easiest way for me to just quickly get something uh, generated out as a concept is to go into Stable Diffusion. And I'm running this locally. If you're not sure what Stable Diffusion is, it's an AI image generator based off of text that we put in. So for this one, I've used River Rock in brackets to make sure that River Rock is the strongest thing that this thing thinks about. Texture, high detail and photo quality. And I've clicked on this little check mark, mark here called tiling. Uh, I'm using 40 steps with uh, Euler A as my sampling method. And honestly, if you know nothing about this, uh, don't worry about any of these things. Uh, these are the very, very average settings. There's nothing special here. And I've had it spit out four pictures. So it gave me this one, this one, which is pretty good, this one, and then this one, which was kind of okay. I think I can use this for something else, but I really wanted river rock. River rock is a very round rock, not sharp and not jagged and all that kind of stuff. And the coolest thing is actually there's a little bit of water and some, some little gravel down in between the cracks and stuff. So I think that's really cool. So I'm just going to use this for my texture within Blender. But the first thing we have to do is make it bigger because right now we've spit it out as a 512 by 512 uh, texture because Stable Diffusion has a hard time making textures bigger. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, memory to do that. And uh, it supposedly does sampling or it's generating, it's image generating based off of 512 by 512 pictures. So Next thing to do is use an app called Chainer. And I think I'll do a tutorial about this one in the future because I think it's really handy. Uh, but it is my image upscaler. And essentially you load in an image, you load in the model that you want it to use. So essentially the algorithm or the brains behind how it's going to upscale a 512 by 512 to a 2K. So 2048 by 2048 picture and then spit it out with this node here. If you're unfamiliar with nodes and how this works, essentially it's just like this thing loads it in. This thing does the upscaling and says, well, how do I do upscaling? And it does it based off of this algorithm, which is a model. It's no different than Stable Diffusion uses. It uses models. And then once it's upscaled it, it says, okay, well, let's save it somewhere. So this is where I've saved it. So you can see down here, we've got a 2K. Uh, this is at 79%. So this is quite, quite nice quality compared to this 512 by 512. Even if I zoom in, you can see it starts to get kind of fuzzy. So we want a 2K image. We want to go with our, our biggest, biggest image we can kind of get to then make a texture, which we are going to do inside of Substance 3D Sampler. Okay, so I'm just going to load up Substance 3D Sampler so that we can make our sample, our texture, our thing that we're going to use inside of Blender. Now this is a really cool app and it's very, very simple to make textures. I'm just going to lead you guys through the UI just a, just a little bit if you want. But essentially when you load it up, you get a, a ball or something, whatever you've maybe done last time. Usually it's a ball that I think by default. But you can choose a plane or a cube and that's just accessible down in the bottom left viewer settings icon or a rounded cube or a rounded cylinder or a closed cylinder. Yeah, there's all kinds of options in here for whatever textures you think you might want to make. Even a shoe. And of course there's Matt, the little uh, robot. He's cool. But what we're going to do is we're just going to choose sphere for now. All we have to do is go back to our texture and inside of here is our River Rock Texture, we just drag it on, just like that. And it will say to us, hey, what do you want to do? And we are going to say Image to Material. It says AI Powered or B2M. We want AI Powered, it's better. So click Import. And I think what it does is it uploads the image off to Adobe. It's a server somewhere, I think. And then it does some stuff, although it might be doing it locally, but I think it's uploading. And what it'll do is it'll come back with everything that we're going to need for Blender to create a texture. And here we are. And it brings it in. Now it's not bad. The texturing of the texture itself is average, but this is really just for concept, just a concept art thing. Let's change this over to plane, see how it looks on the ground. 
See, that's not bad. You could get away with that. And it's got a bit of bump to it. Now, we're not going to worry too much about how much Substance 3D does its bumps. Oh, and also, actually, really neat thing. If you head over to the environment, you can also change up which environment it might, might be living in. So here's, I uh, just put it on a panorama of some field somewhere with a forest. Here's something with more blue sky or brighter, maybe. Um, you can have it out on a street somewhere where it really gets blown out. <laughs> or in a desert. But the, the basic ones are really the studios. You can use the studio lighting ones to give you an idea. It really is just changing a bit of the color and the intensity. And you can also turn on the environment if you wanted to, and then move around. You see, this is the studio that it's going to live in. Or go ahead and change to one of the panoramas. You can see this is where this is living in the panorama. The sun is somewhere over there. So we're going to see the shadows coming this way so on and so forth. It's really just to visualize what your texture looks like. It's pretty cool. Uh, if you find that distracting, you can go ahead and just click down here to environment visibility off. Or if you find it that you want it, but you don't want it as visible, just turn the opacity down. And that's not bad. Now, if you do find that, hey, you know, it would be cool if it was just in a different sort of location, you can rotate your environment around. And look at the shadows change a little bit on those rocks. That's really cool because obviously the sun is in a location and this thing's trying to figure that out. Now, the way it figures it out is it creates these bump maps and displacement maps. And that will essentially tell the mesh what to do. And we can see all of that kind of stuff way over on the right hand side uh, when we want to look at our texture and uh, and what the AI thinks. And you can do some detailed stuff inside of, out of here. Change our roughness, for example, as well. So how shiny it is. And honestly, I don't tend to mess with these settings much because we can do a lot of that messing around inside of Blender. But for, for viewing it, you know, you can, you can do all kinds of stuff and it'll really help you visualize how it looks. Last thing in here is actually the camera and it's perspective or orthographic. Orthographic is sort of a set field. It's hard to explain exactly. Orthographic is very rigid, but perspective is more about how we look at it as people. So you probably want to just keep that on perspective and that will just look like that. Uh, the other thing that we can we can head into, we can go into the shader settings to, to mess around with uh, how many samples there are. Uh, the displacement quality, so how well this is displaced. So if we just, if we go and we bring this down, you can see that it starts to displace a little bit weird here. See how it's not very good? So we we'll bring that quality up. And by default, the quality is, I think it's 0.75. That's quite high. It's quite good. We can turn on shadows and that will add more shadows. And it's pretty dramatic. So I usually turn those off. It, it uses a little bit more processing power to do these kinds of things. We can increase the number of samples or decrease them, say down to four. You see a tiny change there. If we go all the way up to 64, you know, it's a, it's a little bit, but it's really, really slow. So it really is going to depend on the computer that you've got. Uh, I think somewhere in the middle, 16 is just fine for sampling. And all the rest of the stuff, honestly, um, you don't, you know, you can mess with this height and stuff like that. The default settings are usually pretty darn good. Just keep it, keep it probably pretty low for the most part. We can change all this stuff inside of Blender anyways. So once you've got your texture and you think it's looking about right, I mean, you can mess with these things. It can be important, but then we want to head over to the right hand side where it says share, which is kind of an odd, uh, a little bit odd in my mind. <laughs> doesn't matter though, because this is where we go to save. So we can put export as, and when we do export as it's going to ask us where we want to put our stuff. So I already have a place where I want it to go. I haven't named my material. So let's call this river rock, something like that. And I want to create a subfolder for all of these images to go in. The format, there's a bunch of options in here. I usually choose just PNG. And uh, because I'm using Blender, there's a preset in here that says for uh, Arnold 5 Blender. Uh, there's a bunch of options here. <laughs> let's not go into all that. But I usually use the blenders of cycles slash EV. The resolution is 2048 by 2048, which is the size of the image that I brought in. That's perfect. What we want is we want the base color, the normal, the roughness. We can ignore metallic and alpha and emissive. We can just use that. We just, we really want the displacement, roughness and, roughness and normals. And of course the base color for this. So we can hit export. And what that will do is it'll save all of the images that we're going to use inside of Blender, inside of a folder. So inside of here, we now have my river rock texture files. And you can see 
once this moves there we go you can see it we've got our our base and then we've got our displacement this is our normal map and this is our roughness so how shiny things should be okay so once we have this we can hop into blender so let's hop into blender now what's inside blender i've just got the default scene that comes up so i'm just going to get rid of the cube for now and we're going to bring in a plane and uh, let's go ahead and tab into this and we'll scale this on the Y because I'm essentially I'm going to make a river. So this river is very simple. Let's go ahead and tab out of that. And we want to go into the shading. So we'll shading, tab here, hit new, and then we'll click on the principal BSDF, control shift T. When you hit control shift T, we're going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So make sure when you go into your add-ons, it'll be here, it says Node Wrangler. If not, uh, search for it and enable it. So let's hit control shift T and that will bring up our Explorer file view kind of thing. And we'll go into River Rock and we'll just select all of these and set them up, bam. And what that does is it sets up all of these textures in here to fit onto our plane. Now the plane, is not UV mapped yet. So let's go into it by hitting tab, hit U, unwrap, and now we've got our texture laid out on there. Now we're going to have two problems. <laughs> First one is scale is way off. So take a look down here inside of the shader, and we're just going to hit get the scale to be something like five, maybe, maybe let's go six. Let's make those a little bit smaller. That's looking pretty good. And let's tab scale. X. Make this a little wider. Now because we changed the scale, we can hit U, unwrap again, and that will unwrap it so that it looks like this. Now I understand that it is looking like a tiling texture, but that's not important for what we're doing right here. We just want to get this in and get it working. So next thing to do is head over into the, the render settings. We're going to change to cycles. And once we have that, we just GPU compute. Go back into your texture or your, your object here. And down inside of the materials, we're going to go down to settings and inside of here, we'll hit displacement and bump. When we do that, we're going to go into our cycles rendering view and it's going to look like this. All right. So that's coming along. Okay. So this is coming along, but we don't have any displacement of the rock. And the reason is, is we don't have any geometry. This is a single polygon. So to fix that problem, we're going to add a modifier and the modifier is going to be subdivision surface simple so that it doesn't because we don't want to subdivide the corners and stuff. So it's just simple and we'll set this up to say six. Now that gets pretty funky. So the next step is to go down into our shader down here in displacement. Scale of one is way too high. We're going to go like 0 0.1. We'll start with that. See how that looks. That's nothing. So we'll go a little higher. And that's starting to look a little bit like a river. And it's only going to be from a distance. So I'm actually going to just bump this up a little higher and add a few more subdivisions, like uh, 10, because that's going to take a second because there's a lot of subdivisions. But what we want is we want the displacement to be really detailed. So there we go. Now we've got some pretty good details out of these rocks. Now, obviously this isn't the best texture, but this is a concept. That's what I mean. Like this definitely needs to be a bit of a concept process because there was nothing out there. So if I wanted to later on, I can remodel these rocks and re texture them. But at the very least, I have a very simple river rock system. And that's all from just using uh, tools that that I can have straight here. I don't have to go anywhere to go buy anything for the textures which uses stable diffusion and uh, Chainer is also free. It's a uh, upscaling. Uh, it does many things. But one of the things that it does really well is upscaling. So upscale to 2k bring that into substance 3d sample. There's another free program out there uh, that I'll talk about in another video called Materialize, but I really like Substance 3D Sampler. It's really, really simple and just spits stuff out so nicely. The UI is easy to use, just very, very simple. And then into Blender, which also is a relatively painful process, other than you just need to get the texture set up properly and hoping that it is a great tiling texture. So there you go. That's my process of, of doing concept textures for Blender with Substance 3D and stable diffusion. Hopefully that has been interesting. If you have any questions or thoughts, let me know anytime and I'll see you guys in the next one.